This is a video about the uh, uniform norm uniform norm for sequences of functions. Another name for it uh, that you might hear is the supremum norm or the sup norm. So let's get into it. So what's the preliminary thing that we need? So if I've got some subset A of the real numbers, let's say I've got a function, I'm gonna say phi. If you say phi, I'm sorry, then I'm gonna annoy you. I'm gonna say phi though. So if I've got a function phi from A to the real numbers, uh, I wanna remind you that I'd say phi, the function, is bounded on its domain A. If the set phi of A, which is the set of all outputs phi of X, where X is an element of A, another way you can think about this is, I might think of this as the range of this function if A is the domain. Anyway, if that's a bounded subset of the real numbers. All right, so what is the new definition? So again, that's kind of old news that I uh, think that you're probably familiar with. So the newer thing is, if phi is a bounded function, then we're gonna define this thing that's called the uniform norm of the function phi on its domain A by the following. So the notation for it is these double bars. It looks like a double absolute value of the function. And there's a little subscript here that's just trying to tell you what is the domain of the function. And so what's the definition of this new symbol? What are you doing to the function? What this wants is just the supremum of the following set, the set of all possible absolute value of phi of x for x and a. And what I'd like to do is draw you a picture just to help us wrap our heads around what is the uniform norm of a function. And so let's say I've got this picture here. I've got this nice graph of this function phi that's in red. And its domain, I've just tried to emphasize, are the, the x values that are colored in yellow. That's A. And now what I'm looking at, I want to know what is the uniform norm of phi on this thing here. And uh, in this case, what I'm looking at is in my picture, it looks like... Um, Maybe I should back up a second. If I'm interested in this, what I'm looking at is what's the largest possible value? What's the least upper bound is maybe more accurate to say. What's the least upper bound for all of these numbers? Absolute value of phi of x. So what I'm looking at is L down there. And I see that, well, L is the lowest point on the graph and L is really low and it's uh, even lower that way than say this point at one is high. And so I hope that makes sense when I say that. So what I'm trying to say is that if I was to take the absolute value of this function phi, well then this would correspond to the tallest point on the absolute value of the function phi. So this value L, it's gonna be, so I guess maybe I should say absolute value of L, it should be the largest output for um, absolute value of phi. Therefore, again, I should say absolute value of L, whatever the absolute value of that number is, that would be the supremum norm of this function phi on its domain A. So in this case, uh, again, if you're, if you're at the, say, the lowest point on the graph, but that's even lower than the highest point on the graph is high, then that's gonna be the supremum norm. You know, if I was to draw you another picture, or what if I was to just say, this is phi right here on its domain A, let's say I shortened A, well then this value, whatever that Y value is, would be the supremum norm. And note too that like your function doesn't have to be necessarily defined there in order to be the supremum, right? Remember, supremums don't, have to be, don't actually have to belong to this set. So be careful about that too. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this thing? So uh, maybe before I go too much further, given any positive number epsilon, we wanna get it comfortable with the fact that saying that the supremum norm or the uniform norm of phi over a is less than or equal to epsilon is equivalent to saying that the absolute value of phi of x is less than or equal to epsilon for every single x uh, in the domain of a. And so I think that you could probably see that because uh, this is trying to say here that uh, epsilon is an upper bound for the set of all such values, right? But what do I know? I know that phi, uh, sorry, the uniform norm is supposed to be the least upper bound, therefore this has to be true. Uh, and vice versa, you could read it this way as well. So I hope that we're comfortable with what that says. We're gonna use it in a minute. Uh, and the proof of the following thing. So what is this uniform norm good for in this chapter, uh, for this section? If you've watched the previous video that I posted, it was about uniform convergence of sequences of functions. So the uniform norm gives us another way to characterize uniform convergence of a sequence of functions on a domain. So on some subset of the real numbers. So anyway, what are we gonna prove? So we're gonna say that, uh, we're gonna prove rather that a sequence of functions fn, and so further, they're bounded functions. So I can only use the uniform norm when, you, when you're talking about bounded functions. So a sequence of bounded functions on some domain A, uh, it converges uniformly on A to some function F, if and only if the uniform norm of the difference of Fn minus F converges to zero. All right, so let's do the proof of this. 
So let's go, what do I gotta do? I've got this if and only if, so I've gotta do the forward direction, which tells me that uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to suppose that Fn converges uniformly to F on this domain. Remember this double arrow notation means converges uniformly. So given any epsilon bigger than zero, that means that there exists some natural number N such that once my index gets past that n, then I should have that all of the functions in my sequence fn should be within epsilon of f. And, and uh, moreover, right, this uniform convergence means that this n only depends on epsilon. So in other words, for that n, I'm also guaranteed that all outputs fn of x are within epsilon of f of x. So that works for every x in the domain a. So what does this say if I look at this? Well, this is trying to say that epsilon is an upper bound for all such numbers, absolute value fnx minus x. So epsilon is an upper bound again for this set here. And so what do we know that the uniform norm is? Well, the uniform norm is the least upper bound. Therefore, I have a comparison between the uniform norm and epsilon, which would tell me that the supremum has to be less than or equal to epsilon. Again, what I've highlighted here, the uniform norm is the least upper bound for this set. And so what did we just show? We just showed that for every epsilon, any possible epsilon, it is always the case that the uniform norm is less than or equal to epsilon. Therefore, we can say that the limit, uh, as, again, when I say limit here, I mean as n goes to infinity, so it's pretty typical to suppress that notation there. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the difference of these two functions in the uniform norm is zero. So that was one direction, let's go the other direction. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna assume that Fn minus F actually goes to zero. So the uniform norm of Fn minus F goes to zero. So again, we are assuming this. And so our goal is to try to prove that, uh, that uh, Fn converges uniformly on A to F. So that's our goal. So how does this go? And what we wanna do is maybe write down the definition of this, what's it mean? So that tells me this is a limit, right? This is trying to say the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing goes to zero. Let's write that down as far as uh, in terms of uh, epsilons. And so I've got the limit of a sequence. Let's write that down with the epsilon definition of what it means for the limit of a sequence to be zero. So given any epsilon, there exists a natural number such that again, once I get past that index capital N, I should have that uh, Fn minus F, and I'm gonna write it for emphasis here, minus zero, that difference should be less than epsilon. Another way how you should read this is that uh, these two quantities on the left side should be within epsilon of each other if you were to plot them on a number line. So, and further, we know for all x in the domain of these functions that uh, the absolute value of fn of x minus f of x is less than or equal to this. So how do we know that? Well, because this is an upper bound for all such numbers. So what can I say now? Thus for all n past, again, the same capital N that I got from the definition of the limit of a sequence converging to zero, for all n big enough, I should be able to have that if this is less than epsilon, therefore this is less than epsilon for all x. So what do we have? I've got this is less than epsilon for all x in my domain. And so furthermore, this n here, it didn't depend on any x, right? This worked for all x in the domain. Therefore, this is the definition of uniform convergence. So again, this n that we picked out here, it only depended on epsilon. And when I was able to achieve this inequality down here, again, that only depended on epsilon and not on the particular x that we used. Again, it works for all x. That is the definition of what it means for these functions to converge uniformly to f. Now let's do an example. What did that just show? That just showed that maybe in some cases, I've got another way to think about trying to show a sequence is uniformly convergent to another function. So let's say that I've got this, all these functions fn, and let's say the domain is from zero to five to the real numbers, and let's say the formula for fn is x squared over n. So if a is zero, five, surprise, I mean, that was the domain here, I'm gonna try to show you that fn, these functions, x squared over n, uniformly converges to zero on, and there shouldn't be a zero there, it's just on a, so on zero, five. And um, well, how am I gonna do this in this case? Well, notice this function, um, x squared over n, if it's just on this domain zero, five, it's bounded, right? Like uh, I know that that function, um, what, it's smallest at zero and it's biggest when x is five, so it's definitely bounded. So that allows me to use the uniform norm to talk about uniform convergence. So again, that's key. You've always got to check that your sequence of functions is bounded before you try to do anything with the uniform norm. And I'm just going to do it this way to illustrate how you use it. 
And so it suffices to show that the difference of fn minus zero in the uniform norm goes to zero. And this turns out to be pretty easy. And again, when I write this, that's a limit, right? Goes to zero, and you're like, what goes to zero? Well, n, as your functions in your sequence get closer, uh, I'm sorry, as, uh, as you get further and further into the sequence of functions that you have. So again, it's always, uh, we usually suppress that limit notation here, but take it to mean as n goes to infinity. All right, so what do we wanna notice? Well, we can kind of get our hands on this thing here. I've got a formula for what each fn looks like, and minus zero is pretty cool, because uh, the difference has to be, happens to be, just my sequence of functions. So what is the definition of the uniform norm of these functions again? Remember, it's the supremum of the absolute value of all the outputs. I don't need absolute value here, because all my x values here, when I plug those in, you get a positive number you see. So all I'm asking for is just, what's the supremum of the set of such numbers? And uh, what do you notice? Well, I mean, it's gonna be biggest whenever you plug in the biggest number here and square it, right? So the supremum happens to be 25 over n. So what do we have? I'm gonna take the limit now. So the limit, again, is n goes to infinity of the difference of fn and zero in the uniform norm. We just show that that's the same thing as the limit of 25 over n as n goes to infinity, which of course is zero. Thus, we have shown that the uniform norm of the difference goes to zero and by the result that we just proved up here, that's in purple, that is the same thing as showing that my sequence of functions fn converges uniformly to zero. So the uniform norm is pretty nifty.